Well, are, are, we, are we overlooking this Steelers team as a legit AFC contender? Jeff Darlington, I'll start with you. I don't think people are overlooking them. I think we're all just kind of recognizing how strong the AFC is in general, as Damian pointed out, the division itself. It's going to be very difficult, even if they are a talented, overachieving team, for them to get in the playoffs just by pure math. If they don't win the division, it's, it's not as if, and maybe they do win the division, but it's not as if it's easy entry in, into with a wild card. There's the AFC East is so stacked. You've got the Chargers and the Chiefs in the same division. I just think it's complicated math, not necessarily uh, an insult to anything that the Steelers project to be. Yeah, like Harry Douglas said yesterday, the math ain't math, and if you're putting four teams in that division in the playoffs. Neek, but are the Steelers a team that we got to consider a playoff contender? I mean, yeah, I think they're a playoff contender, maybe, but I think it's unlikely. Uh, they are a team that we saw overachieve last year, and we're expecting a leap from Kenny Pickett. Their biggest problem last year was offensive line. They've addressed it, but they haven't solved it. And with the issues with Matt right. Canada's play calling, I expect that to improve also. But as talented as that defense is, it's not without flaws that can be attacked. So I think they'll be good. I think they'll be well coached. I think they'll be competitive. They might make the playoffs, but the problem is their conference. They're in the NFC. Mm -hmm. I guarantee they make the playoffs. But the AFC, there's a lot of teams in their division that could make the playoffs before we even get to the wider conference as a whole. I'll tell you what, D. Wood, three things we can guarantee, death taxes and Mike Tomlin with a winning record. And that's yes. a big difference when it comes to, you know, deciding what the Steelers can be this year. you got to consider that. Yeah. I mean, listen, Mike Tomlin always say the standard is the standard, right? And I think the biggest thing for them is some of these young guys that they've drafted take, take the leap. That's what we're banking on here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. These, all these young players, you know, the Kenny Pickens, the George Pickens, those, if those guys take a leap, then I, I, I absolutely feel like the Pittsburgh Steelers will be in the playoffs. Yeah, again, it's the division. It's that they got to beat up each other. There's yeah. so much that goes on with that division, but it's all, always that. The caveat is Mike Tomlin, and there's a lot of talent there, and, of course, health. T.J. Watt was not healthy last season. All right, so <laughs> let's get some reaction, though, to this. D. Wood, Dak Prescott, we've been talking about is he playing for his job, and Neek's saying he might be the MVP. He could, man. Like, like we got to – I don't know where this whole take – like, people think Dak Prescott is a scrub or something like that. Dak Prescott absolutely could, you know, play like this. I, I, I've, you know, I said it in, in hour number one, the biggest unknown is Mike McCarthy's play calling, right? Like, that, that has a direct correlation to the, to the quarterback play. But I think that Dak Prescott – Here's all the noise. He, we've been talking about ad nauseum, it seems like, all offseason long. And so I think the Dallas Cowboys are built, and I think Dak Prescott is built to have a big season this year. And last, last year we saw the, the wide receivers couldn't separate outside of C. Lamb, bring in Brandon Cooks. I think Dak's going to cook this year. So you really are – so you're buying that more than you would the what we've been talking about, which is – this could be the end for him if he doesn't have. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I, I never bought into like Dak. This being the end for Dak or anything. I think last year, I always felt like last year was like, like an aberration as far as Dak, you know, throwing all those turnovers and stuff like that. I think Dak is, is going to come back and have a big year this year. All right, Mr. Tepid takes. You kind of set this up by saying, Jeff, that that you feel like he could he could have a better passer yeah. rating. So you're also expecting Dak Prescott to have a good year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're being so reasoned about Dak Prescott today. I feel like Greeny, if he's at home watching, is just freaking out saying, we, we got to switch this up. Allen's gone. We're all gone. Like, this is just too rational. But I do think that Dak Prescott sets up really well. Mike McCarthy obviously believes that him going into this and calling the plays and being more conservative about some of that will help. I'm curious how that will go over in general. I think that Dak Prescott's future with the Cowboys is very safe. I think he'll play very efficient ball. The question for me is how it will all sort of spell out in the grand scheme of things with the offense. But I do not think that Dak is the problem. Now, the one thing that, that when Booger McFarlane was on yesterday, he, he made reference to something that I thought was really interesting. That in Seattle, the problem with Russ was he freelanced a lot. And obviously last year that happens a lot and it's tough to play with. And that Sean Payton has to get him to buy in and follow the game plan. And that's not necessarily something that Booger feels like. Like, Russ has to buy in. It's not going to be on Sean Payton. 
And so that's the biggest concern there is whether or not he's going to, at this point, buy in. And, and D. Wood, late in his career now, this is a veteran. This is a quarter, like, name me a quarterback that has changed to a new coach that has had success before and changed the way he has played. It rarely happens, but it's going to have to happen here. Yeah, listen, I, I think the biggest thing, man, is it's like, you know, when Sean Payton was, was, had all those years with Drew Brees, you know, their offense was all about timing and rhythm, you know. And that, that really, that, when, you talk, when you say timing and rhythm, that doesn't really describe Russell Wilson's game um, because a lot of things he did in, in Seattle was, you know, kind of getting outside the pocket. And Russell Wilson was one of the best deep ball throwers that we, that we had in this game for quite some time. So it just, to me, it's just going to be really interesting to see how Russell Wilson game meshes with the way Sean Payton likes to run his offense. Can, can, the, can, they, can they mesh together? I think that's the biggest question that I have about this, this marriage that they have in Denver. Now, Jeff, it's, it's really, that's why Sean Payton is there, right? Isn't that job one is to get Russell Wilson uh, back yeah. playing at a top five level? Yeah, and I would push back a little bit on that, Alan, what you said about not being able to change the way a quarterback plays, I think we actually see it a lot in the league. Ben Johnson's doing it with the Lions and Jared Goff, Mike McDaniel with Tua. Um, I, I think we've actually, the question here is though, have we seen it with such a veteran quarterback, a Super Bowl winning quarterback? Would that actually be something that would happen? Look, to me, Sean Payton's assignment going into this, aside from just changing the overall culture in Denver, is to make Russell Wilson work, given the contract that was bestowed upon him. So they have to both invest in this. Uh, we're six months removed from, I think, most people believing that Sean Payton was the only guy that could potentially fix Russell Wilson. I'm willing to be patient and see this through. Um, I think there's been a lot of tough love through the summer. How Russell Wilson responds to that could, to me, dictate the next few years of his career. Yeah, and, and again, to be clear, that's the point I was trying to make is what you said there, Jeff, is the fact that I'm talking about a guy that's won a Super Bowl, that's been to the mountaintop, right. that, you know, is that level of a quarterback who now is going to be told how to change his game. It is something that obviously bears watching. But, Neek, what will then constitute success for this season in Denver? Is it just simply making the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, I think the expectations have changed. I know you. we have to assume that they were expecting to be Super Bowl contenders when they, brought, when they brought in Russell Wilson, but right now we just need to show some improvement and competence. And I think that while, yes, we need to put pressure or there should be pressure put on Russell Wilson to change the way he plays to some degree to fit in Sean Payton's system, the same thing should be expected of Sean Payton. So if Russell Wilson does not have success this year, I don't think – I feel like we are set ourselves up to say, well, guess Russell Wilson stinks. No, this coach's job is to find a way to make it work. And we know that Russell Wilson has the skill and talent to be successful in this league. So if they fail, it's equal parts on Russell and on Sean Payton this season. Smash the helmet or helmets of the teams that are not going to win the division. Okay, so let me start right here with the team that's probably going, going to change their name. The Washington Commanders. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're they, getting them out of the club right now. You I, that. Yeah, I crushed that. Man, like, I, I feel really it, like, good today. Yeah, that's a good one. I really do. Look, I like Sam Howell. I think Sam Howell's going to be a ball in this league, all right. watching defense, all that. But, no, nah, they're not going to win the division this okay. year. All okay. Right. How about we go? Okay, oh, big no. blue. Yeah. The, oh, and you see the right, force right. I'm coming with big blue? Yeah, because you know they're the okay. crosstown rivals, so I got to give a little extra juice to that right there. <laughs> the Giants, okay? The Giants, they are out. They are out. Okay? They're out. Now, this is tough because I think these two teams right here are very close. Remember the history 20 years, no right. repeat champion. Choose wisely, choose carefully. No. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm smashing the Dallas Cowboys. I, 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 listen, I, yeah, Dallas Cowboys, Dak going to bounce back, but I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles to repeat in the NFC East. Now let's move over here. Now hang on a second. Oh, what's that? There's some giant stuff in the way. Oh, we can throw that. Just clean that up. Yeah, we can throw that out Over to the AFC Okay, AFC East. What do you got? My former squad. Come on. Oh get them, let's go ahead and get them out of the way Good real Lord. quick, okay? All right. They just that's just not happening. All right. There All right. So now we got right here, okay? Miami Dolphins. No, nah, we not even. Jeff I think if, if Jeff Jeff Darling, two will stay out. healthy, we, we got something to talk about. But, but that's a big it. if. Okay. I don't expect it. Okay. Right. Now Three we got time these two. defending champs. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I'm going right here. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, it, that hurt me. It hurt me to do that. It hurt me, yes. It hurt me to do that, being that I played with this organization. No. But I'm going to give some respect. No. No, no. I'm going to get, wait, no, no, huh, what are you doing? You can't accept that. No, 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 see, when, no, when, I, when, I, when I pound the table, that's it. There's no putting the helmet back together, okay? I'm giving some, some respect. I'm putting some respect on the <laughs> Buffalo Bills name. We've been, it seems like everyone is disrespecting the Buffalo Bills. They've been the king of the division, and I'm going to give them respect right now until someone unseats them. So I'm going with the Bills. I don't know how to feel about this. I, like I said, I, it I hurt me to do much. that. It hurt me. It hurt me more. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.